This is Kini News and I'm your host Prasad bringing you today's top stories. It's strike two for Najib. If the federal court agrees with the two lower courts, it'll be jail time for the former Prime Minister. Former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak failed in his appeal to reverse the guilty verdict and sentencing in the 42 million ringgit SRC international corruption case. The Court of Appeal dismissed Najib's appeal and maintained the conviction, 210 million ringgit fine and 12-year jail term against him. A three-person bench chaired by Court of Appeal Judge Abdul Karim Abdul Jadid delivered the decision this morning. Najib and his defense counsel Muhammad Shafi Abdullah appeared on Zoom for the proceedings. The court ruled that the prosecution has successfully proven all seven charges of abuse of power, criminal breach of trust, and money laundering against Najib. Najib was also allowed for a stay of execution of the 12-year jail term and 210 million ringgit fine pending his appeal to the federal court. Judge Abdul Karim said that the term to the stay is the same as that given by the high court, namely that the bail remains at 2 million ringgit with two sureties and that he reports to the nearest police station twice a month. On July 28 last year, the Kuala Lumpur High Court found Najib guilty on one charge of abuse of position as the then Prime Minister, three counts of criminal breach of trust, and three counts of money laundering involving 42 million ringgit of funds from SRC. If you're wondering how Najib is feeling after his actions were described as a national embarrassment by the Court of Appeal, look no further. Najib Abdul Razak said he was left feeling very disappointed after the Court of Appeal today upheld the conviction as well as the 12-year jail term and 210 million ringgit fine against him in the SRC International corruption case. During a virtual press conference, Najib said he will appeal the decision. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that I'm very disappointed uh, in the judgment delivered by the Court of Appeal this morning. Uh, I have asked my lawyers to file an immediate appeal uh, to the federal court. Najib also dismissed the Court of Appeal Judge Abdul Karim Abdul Jali's assessment that his actions in the SRC International case were not national service but a national embarrassment. Meanwhile, Muhammad Shafi Abdullah, Najib's lead defence counsel, who joined the press conference, criticised the Court of Appeal for describing Najib as a national embarrassment. You can see the defense of national interest uh, did not succeed and we reject. That will be the end of the matter. But to go further and say this is national embarrassment, uh, I think is unnecessary. And uh, that can cause some serious element of uh, perception on Dato Sri Najib. Considering that the entire uh, uh, conviction and uh, sentence has been stayed. So the effect of such a statement, no doubt in law, cannot be defamation. But the effect is like a defamation because uh, it is unnecessary when you say that the defense of national interest doesn't subsist. It is not national interest, but rather national interest. That is something very disappointing, I thought. In delivering the court's judgment, Judge Karim said Najib had acted for his own personal benefit. He added that it was not something that can be said to have been done in the national interest. Najib is certainly disappointed with the outcome of his corruption trial, but his wife appeared to have a slightly better day in court, but only in the sense that her trial was postponed. The Kuala Lumpur High Court today postponed Rosma Manso's corruption trial in connection with the solar energy project. This is because her Maisa Jathra status showed that she had come in close contact with a COVID-19 patient. Justice Muhammad Zaini Maslan also awakened at tomorrow's hearing after Rosma's counsel Jagjit Singh told the court that her Maisa Jathra status is orange. According to her lawyer, Rosma waited in the car while waiting for the judge's decision on whether to continue the proceedings or to vacate. Meanwhile, her husband, Najib's Maisa Jathra status, is reportedly red. Asked by Justice Mohamed Zaini whether Najib is positive for COVID-19, Jagjit replied that he was not sure but was informed his status was red. Justice Mohamed Zaini then said red means the person is positive for COVID-19 to which the lawyer replied that he was not sure. The memes of Najib's trial have been flooding social media and one warranted a denial from the prison's department. 
The prison department has denied publishing a poster welcoming Najib Abdul Razak to the Sungai Bulo prison. The poster went viral on social media following the Court of Appeal's decision this morning that upheld Najib's convictions in the SRC international corruption case. The poster, which had the prison's department logo on top, stated Selamat datang to Sungai Bulo prison to Najib. It also contained a sarcastic phrase that tells Najib not to pick up any bar soap from the prison floor. In a short statement posted on Twitter and Facebook, the department called the poster fake news. Now we have a message from our sponsor. When we're back, find out why having well-known parents aren't always a good thing. Shellfish, red meat and beer. If you love indulging in these foods, you may end up with high uric acid level in your blood. These foods consist high level of purine, a substance that will eventually break down into uric acid and be excreted through our urine. It is recommended that the amount of dietary purines should be kept between 600 to 1000 mg per day. Having too much uric acid in your blood can cause attacks of gout. It can also cause kidney stones and blockage in the kidney. The crystallization of the excessive uric acid in your blood can be eased by reducing purine-rich food to only 100 to 150 mg daily, maintaining a healthy lifestyle, and consuming urinary alkalinizer like Ural. It consists of sodium bicarbonate, citric acid, and sodium citrate that increases the urinary pH and solubility of uric acid to prevent crystallization. Best of all, it's lemon-flavored and sugar-free. Ural, effective urinary alkalinizer. Neutralize your uric acid problem now. Having well-known parents can be great for your career, unless your parents were linked to the National Feedlot Corporation. Communications and Multimedia Minister Anwar Musa has defended the appointment of Sharizat Abdul Jalil's daughter as a Malaysian Digital Economy Corporation Independent Non-Executive Director. He called for a fair attitude towards one Izana Fatima Zabedah Mohamad Saleh, who is highly qualified and said she should not be marred by issues faced by her parents. Anwar said one Izana is a young woman who graduated from Imperial College and Harvard. He added that she has her own track record and experience. Netizens have previously criticised Wan Izana's appointment as she is a defendant in a lawsuit the government launched against her family to reclaim more than 250 million ringgit owed by the National Feedlot Corporation. Wan Izana was sued in her capacity as the former director of NFC. Hartal Doctor Contract is taking the wait and see approach after calling off their second strike. The Hartal Doctor Contract movement has postponed a planned second strike nationwide, which was set to take place today. The strike was planned against the government for failing to resolve the problems faced by contract doctors. This is because the team decided to await a cabinet decision on permanent posting for these doctors. This comes after Health Minister Kari Jamaluddin promised on November 25th to bring the matter to the cabinet within two weeks. However, the team pledged to mobilise the second wave of strikes followed by a massive exodus of doctors from government service if the government fails to come out with a constructive solution. The 2022 budget proposes to extend the contracts of 10,000 trainee doctors by another two years, rather than offering them permanent positions. One lawmaker is hoping the government may reconsider its decision to ban processions for a couple of celebrations next year. Jilutong MP Arasan Rayer has submitted a motion to the Day One Rakyat Speaker to debate the ban on processions in the upcoming Taipusam and Chingay celebrations early next year. The lawmaker said processions are an integral part of Taipusam and Chinge and urged the government to reconsider its decision. He told the House that he submitted an emergency motion to the Speaker's office this morning under Standing Orders 18 bracket 1. Yesterday, Unity Minister Halima Mohamad Sadiq had said that SOPs have been prepared for the Taipusam celebration next January. While she did not reveal the full details of the SOP, she said processions will not be allowed during Taipusam or Chingay due to the emergence of the new COVID-19 variant Omicron. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. Abrasad, thank you for watching.
Everyone wants to see these scenes bigger. That's why we've got bigger TVs for everyone to enjoy them bigger. Watch colors come to life on a large screen. LG Nanocell.